Let's also do a recap of associative entities. As I've said earlier, associative entities represent probably the most tricky and important concepts in uh, concept in database design, in entity relationship diagramming. If you don't truly understand associative entities, you can't actually do any serious entity relationship modeling. Okay, so pay special attention to this topic. So now, as we said, when we talked about associative entities, we gave an analogy of the duck test. If it swims like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. That's what we had said earlier. And how does this apply to associative entities? If a relationship seems to have attributes, then it's not just a relationship, it is an entity type. Okay, this is where your relationship is quacking like a duck. It's acting like an entity type because it now has attributes. It's gone beyond being just a relationship and therefore we say, let's promote it and make it an entity type. That's what is an associative entity. Okay, so when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, that is when associative entities crop up. Okay, so when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, always create a new entity type. And that entity type looks just like a regular entity type. There's no difference. But we call that entity type as an associative entity type in the sense that entity type created to capture associations between other entity types. Let's take an example. There are lots of business tycoons that those are the people here. There are lots of buildings. Each tycoon has an ownership stake in one or more buildings and each building has one or more owners who share the ownership of that building. Okay, so this is clearly a many-to-many -many relationship between tycoons and buildings. One tycoon can have an ownership stake in many buildings. One building can be simultaneously owned, partially owned by many different tycoons. Okay, so for example, I've got this building called the Gatsby and it is jointly owned by Jill and David. There's another building called the Crystal Palace, which is jointly owned by three people, David, William and Matthew. And there's yet another building called the Gaudi Enclave or Gaudi Enclave, which is jointly owned by four people, Sheila, William, Wendy and David. That's the scenario we are trying to model. Buildings, people, many-to-many -many relationship. Okay, so again, we can just start or start directly by creating this many-to-many -many relationship. So I've created an entity type called building, another entity type called tycoon. Some attributes: building ID is the main primary key for building, tycoon ID is the primary key for tycoon, and it's a many-to-many -many relationship because one building can be owned, but can be the possession of many tycoons. And one tycoon could be the owner of several buildings. Okay, so that's the many-to-many -many relationship. And notice that I've taken the trouble to actually give these things names, meaningful names. I'll try to do that as far as possible. So this is what it is. So of course, we've got a many-to-many -many relationship. And we just say, well, we need to create an associative entity type for this. Okay, now you can take that as gospel truth. The instructor has said it, so it must be correct. Or better still, what you should do is to try and find out why is this the case. After all, when it was a one-to-many relationship, we were able to get by just by adding a foreign key. Why can't we do that here? Okay, so that's the point here. Now, the problem here would be you cannot add a foreign key to building or to tycoon because every building has many owners. Right. So just adding an owner ID to building will allow you to show only one owner, but a building has many owners. So adding the owner ID or tycoon ID to building doesn't work. OK, how about adding a building ID to the tycoon table? Right. Once again, a tycoon owns many buildings. If you add building ID to tycoon, you can put in only one building there, because as we've already said, every value has to be atomic. Okay, so therefore, the foreign key approach, it worked for a one-to-many relationship, doesn't work for a many-to-many -many 
relationship. Okay, let's take a concrete example in the form of tables. Okay, you've got all these tycoons and all these buildings, uh, the same tycoons that we spoke about earlier. Right now we know that David has an ownership stake in several buildings and so on. How are we going to represent this? Now just looking at it from the point of view of tables, this is how you would represent it. Right? So you're saying Jill has an ownership stake in building 321 which happens to be Gatsby. And David has an ownership stake also in the building Gatsby. 40, 321, right? So you see the tycoon ID, building ID. Whenever a particular tycoon has an ownership stake in a particular building, we add a row with that tycoon ID and building ID. So that's the many-to-many -many relationship, okay? So notice that whenever there's some person having an ownership stake in some building, there's one line here, okay? So if a particular tycoon has an ownership stake in several buildings, in three buildings, let's say, then that tycoon's ID will appear three times in this table. Okay, now make sure you really take a look at this table and understand very clearly what's going on. I'm going to explain this in subsequent slides as well. Okay, let's take this. So this, these two rows tell us that Jill and David own the Gatsby. 321 is the Gatsby, 10 is Jill, 40 is David. Okay, so this first row tells us that Jill has a stake in the Gatsby. The second row tells us that David has a stake in the Gatsby. Okay, so to represent this relationship between, uh, to represent Gatsby's ownership, we now have two rows. Okay, this tells us that Crystal Palace has the joint ownership by David, William and Matthew. Crystal Palace has the ID 500 and David Williams and Matthew have these IDs 40, 50, 60. Similarly, this tells us that all those four people have an ownership stake in building 343 which is the Gaudi enclave. Okay, so that's the idea here. This is how you represent when you've got a many to many relationship then you have no choice but to create a new table and in the table you represent every single line that connects one entity with another entity type and you show this. In other words, uh, every time a person owns a building, you put a row in this. This is how you represent many-to-many -many relationship, right? So you have, looking at it from a different perspective, you've got the tycoons, you've got the actual tables, tycoons, buildings, and here is your relationship table. Here is the new table that we saw in the previous slide. and I chose to call this table as ownerships, right? Because every row in the table represents an ownership. Could have even called it ownership stake. Uh, okay, every row represents an ownership. The first row represents the fact that Jill has a stake in the Gatsby. 10 has a stake in 321. That's all the first row represent, represents, right? So this table collectively represents all the building ownerships that we are aware of in this particular city. Okay. Now, what is the primary key for ownerships? Clearly, tycoon ID alone cannot be the primary key because the same tycoon ID appears many times. Obviously, because the same tycoon owns many buildings or has many ownerships. And therefore, just giving the tycoon ID doesn't tell us doesn't help us to identify a particular ownership. Similarly, building ID cannot be the key because the same building has multiple owners. So if I just say specify a building number or building ID, then I don't know which specific ownership is being talked about. Okay, so if I say building 321, then in the ownerships table, are you talking about the first row or the second row? If I say building 343, which of these four, four rows are we talking about? Right? We already know that a primary key has to uniquely identify a row in the table. So neither tycoon ID nor building ID uniquely identifies a row, but of course we can see that the combination does. Right? It's obviously uh, a particular tycoon has a particular ownership stake in a building. Okay. 
So there's no point in have saying the same thing two or three times. The moment you have said 10, 321, Jill has an ownership stake in the Gatsby. You've said it. There's no need to say it again. And therefore, this combination is not going to repeat. Okay. So therefore, the combination can be the primary key. Tycoon ID plus building ID. Okay. Having said all that, let's see how this translates into an entity relationship diagram. So you've got building, you've got tycoon. That was originally the many-to-many -many relationship. Now we have introduced a new table, in other words, an associative entity that really corresponds to this table. And we call this ownership. Remember, entity types we name with singular nouns. So we call it ownership. The table names we tend to name it with plural nouns. Okay, so that's what it is. Of course, now look at the cardinalities. Every building might have multiple ownerships, right? So take this building 321, it has two ownerships. 500 has three ownerships. 343 has four ownerships, right? So clearly, every building can have multiple ownerships. And of course, from our example, we said every building has to be owned by at least one person. Therefore, this line near building is solid. Of course, similarly, every tycoon has multiple ownerships. So, for example, 40 has several ownerships and so on. 50 has two ownerships. 40 has, I think, three ownerships. So, clearly, a tycoon can have many ownerships and therefore, profit. And, of course, every tycoon, from our example, from our scenario, it says every tycoon must have at least one ownership, otherwise we are not even going to store them in the database. So therefore, solid line on the type on side. On the ownership side, of course, when you're talking about an ownership, you are talking about a particular tycoon having a stake in a particular building. Therefore, every row of ownership is obviously connected to one tycoon in one building. Okay. Therefore, it cannot be, you cannot have an ownership and say, well, I have an ownership, but I don't know who who owns it or I don't know which building you're talking about that doesn't make sense so the moment you're talking about an ownership you're obviously talking about a building and a tycoon okay therefore the line on the near ownership is again solid as we've already discussed the primary key for ownership is tycoon ID building ID therefore key migration on both sides this is what tells us just by looking at the diagram this is what tells us the primary key for ownership is tycoon ID, building ID, the combination. Okay. Now, an important point is you may think, well, ownership has no attributes of its own. What's the point? One role that it already satisfies is to show us the relationship. Without that, we cannot really know who, which people have stakes and which buildings. Okay, so it's playing a role. But most of the time, when you have an associative entity, you will see that it also has some useful attributes. Most of the time. Sometimes you, you may see applications where you've got an associative entity and no other attribute. The attributes are just the primary keys of the participating entity times period, like what is shown here now. But most of the time, you'll see that you can think of some useful attributes okay clearly in this example what might be some additional attributes that we can think of for ownership right i would say pause this video think a little bit what might be an attribute of ownership okay so we are saying person x has a stake in building y that's a relationship what additional information may we want to know about that ownership? Can you think of some attributes? I would say make the effort, pause the video, try to come up with a couple of attributes and then proceed with the video and then I'll show you some attributes. Okay, so here I'm going to list attributes, lots of attributes one by one. For each attribute, think about which entity type, which of these three entity types the attribute could possibly belong to? Number of children. 
Okay. Clearly, that is probably an attribute of tycoon. Buildings, we don't consider buildings as having children. We don't consider ownerships as having children when we are talking about real children, human being children here. So clearly, number of children belongs to tycoon. How about birth date? Assuming we are talking about birth date of a human being, clearly that also belongs to tycoon. A tycoon could have a birth date. How about whether inherited? Right. In other words, we are talking about, we are saying a person has an ownership in a particular building. How did that ownership come about? Did this person go and buy it? Or did this person simply inherit it? Why are we interested? We don't know. We might be interested in this. In certain kinds of applications, this may be of interest. Okay. So, which entity type does whether inherited belong to? Okay. Since inherited, you are talking about a particular ownership being inherited or not inherited, clearly belongs to ownership. Okay. So, that's the first attribute we are seeing that really belongs to the associative entity. Construction date. Obviously, this belongs to building. You're talking about the construction date of a building. Percentage ownership. Here, what we're saying is, we're saying a person has a stake, ownership stake in a building. Well, if a building has two owners, what percentage does each one own? It may not be equal. Maybe the first person owns 10% and the second person owns 90%. Okay, and it may be important to know that, for example, the whole building may be rented out and this, the proportion in which they are going to share the rents would be represented by how much of the building they own. So, percentage ownership is an important attribute and clearly, when you are talking about ownership, you are talking about a building tycoon combination, right? So, I can't say tycoon X has 50% ownership. The obvious question that arises is, in which building? You can't just say Tycoon X has 50% ownership. They may have 50% ownership in one building, 5% ownership in a different building. So unless you tell me the Tycoon and the building, talking about percentage ownership makes no sense. So clearly this is an attribute of ownership. Marital status, by now it's obvious, it belongs to Tycoon. Construction date. Well, we've already resolved this. I don't know why I put it there twice. Belongs to building. Date of acquisition. Okay. Presumably, we are talking about, we are saying a particular person got an ownership stake in a particular building. When did that happen? Clearly, that belongs to ownership. Okay. So, you can see that whenever you have an associative entity, a many-to-many, uh, as a result of a many-to-many -many relationship, you can always think of certain very useful attributes that belong to the associative entity. Okay. Therefore, uh, no matter. Sometimes, of course, it's possible that you may not be interested in any of the in attributes of the associative entity type, but it's always a useful exercise for you to think about what could be some attributes of this associative entity. In other words, what could be some properties that are connected to the relationship?